show where I, Pastissier Luna, here with my co host. <laughs> Fuck, I'm already laughing. Go, go, go. Uh, I'm like a chef right there. Yeah, watch and uh, read a thing and talk about it. Fuck. All right, tell them what you pick. Tell them what you pick. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, this week, we chose Show by Rock. Fuck yeah! God, I love Show by Rock so much. Only I've the first talked about it. God, I've talked about it. Yeah, that's because you didn't get to watch the second one. Oh, boy. Oh, God. I can't wait to just explain the first five minutes of the second season. <laughs> anyway. Show by Rock. Show by Rock is a great show. Show by Rock is a game is a show based on a rhythm game made by Sanrio. You know that company that makes Hello Kitty? Yeah. Yeah, they made this show. And they made the game and the game was like, yeah, fuck it, let's make the show. It started on April fifth, two thousand fifteen and finished on June twenty first. That context uh, makes me rethink everything. But alright. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. April fifth, twenty fifteen, June twenty first, twenty fifteen. That's it. That's it. Alright. As I try to explain the premise to show by rock. You know, it's just. Uh, you know? Yeah, I'm understanding. I, this is all this is all usual casual shit. Yeah, you know, it's just a show where you're sucked into a game. You? Well, the main character is sucked into a game. A girl is sucked into a game. Mm hmm. A uh, phone? She my, makes my. friends and uh, saves the role with music. Yes. Yes. Yes, in the simplest words imaginable. That is the easiest way to put show by rock. Okay, there's a lot of people in this thing, <laughs> so I'm not gonna go over everybody. How I'm much gonna money go... was spent on this? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You can tell because of the CGI. The mm. CGI actually looks good, which is weird for a show that doesn't matter. Do you even need the CGI? Do you even need the CGI? Do you even need the CGI? Good question. I would say no. I would say no. But then the sa- the CGI bits make it look like real Sonario shit. Right? It does look kind of like Hello Kitty. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, maybe there? Maybe that's the part? I don't know. Maybe it's the I honest- CGI merch. I mean, I would. Hell yeah, I would. Uh, as you, uh, all right, look, so <laughs> there's a lot of bands and every band has like three, four people. So I'm not going to do every goddamn band that shows up in the first season because it's like seven. I'm not doing that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say the names of the first main, the first two main bands and then a couple of members from other bands just because their voice actors are interesting. Okay. All right. All right. So first we have Plasmagica. <laughs> That's the main band, it's the one where the girl from a, the regular world gets uh, is becomes the lead guitarist. Her name is Cyan, which uh, because of the nature of Japanese, that represents is Shian. Cyan uh, Hijirikawa, and she's voiced by Eri Inagawa. And I'm really sad because Eri Inagawa doesn't really work on anything. She does a lot of background voices, but she doesn't work on anything compared to literally everyone else on this show. Maybe she so- made money enough money here. Fuck yeah, here we go. So, Retore, the Retori, the the dog. Yeah, by the way, they're all animals. We didn't say that, but they are. Uh, yeah. Anyway, cause Cyan gets turned into a cat girl. It just happens. It just happens. And Retori is a dog. And she's voiced by Mina Manami Numekura, who has done a lot of shit. Here's some things she's done. She was Saya on the Gashikashi. She's currently working on Dr. Stone as Kohaku. That's a cool show. I like it. I like the manga a lot. It's cool. And here we go. She's Hibiki from Idol Master. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay, Moa, the drummer sheep. Is, oh, yeah, Retore plays the bass. Uh, Moa, the drummer sheep, is voiced by Sakura Yane, who's worked on a lot of things. Here are some things. Um... She's the effeminate vampire boy, Gasper, on High School DxD. She's uh, Haru Onodera, the sister of the big loser on Isekoi. We've talked about her before because she's Natsami, Natsumi Koshigaya, the middle sister of the Koshigaya sisters in Don Non Biori. And she's on uh, Boku no Hero Academia as Ochako, the, the sort of like main friend. It's pretty big. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of things. Isekoi is big. Uh, Boku no Hero Academia is big. High School DxD doesn't die. And No No Biori had three seasons. <laughs> Good luck stopping it. Okay, so then there's the lead, the rhythm guitarist and vocalist Choo Choo. 
voiced by Sumire Uesaka. Sumire Uesaka we've talked about before because she is uh, on Good Job Boo as Tamaki. Remember? Uh, yeah, the one that took a photo. Yeah, yeah. She was also another rabbit because Choo Choo is a rabbit. She was on Killing Bites as Ui Inaba. Uh, yeah, that's the second rabbit. Again. That's, on the sec- <laughs> that's the second rabbit. Except the other rabbit had to be afraid of rape. This one did not. So I say step down, but some people argue step up. I also, say step down. Yeah. Also, one of my favorite characters on Idolmaster, Anastasia from Cinderella Girls. That's a real specific one. I don't know if y'all know that, but that's a thing. Uh, also, Xi'an's guitar has a voice. Because it turns out he's a person who put his soul into the guitar. It's a whole thing. We'll get to it. Um, <laughs> the guitar is referred to as Strawberry Heart. It is also the second she gets the item, that's how she gets into the game. Like I said, a lot to explain. Uh, he's voiced by Hiroyuki Yoshino, who was on Yoamushi Pedal. He's on Sket Dance as um, Bosun, the main guy. He was on uh, Turabaru as the friend, Saruyama. And he was on uh, Haku Oki, which is a thing based on the actual people from the Shin Sengumi. So he voiced Heisuke Todo. That's a thing. It had three seasons. It's a thing. Okay. <laughs> people really like the Bakumatsu period. Also, side note, he was on a different show that was about music. A Bakumatsu Rock, which was actually combining the Shinsengumi thing and the music thing. All so right. that's that's a thing. I like a Bakumatsu Rock. It's another thing I've talked about, just like fucking Shobai Rock is like, hey, that's a thing. I love it. It's so fucking weird. All right. So let's talk about Shingon Crimsons, the other band that is currently employed by their fucking label. Because <laughs> that's a thing. Breaking band records. Yeah. Um, banded uh, records because it's you know you're tied together. Okay, Shingon Crimson's their singer is Crow, who is voiced by Kishio ya- uh, Yaniyama, who is an actual singer. He's the singer of the band Grand Rodeo. Also, he's been working in voice acting since 1994. And here are some things he's been on. He was on Midori no Hibi, Seiji, the main guy. Yay! Wow. He's on sh- yeah, he's on Shigeki no Kyojin as uh, Jean. And he was in part four of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as Yuya Funagami, the guy who, um, you know, smells things real good. Okay, um, uh, uh, also, Crow is a hedgehog. That's a thing. He's uh, not a crow. He's not. He's not. That is his name. I think it's because Kudo, like, the way you would say Crow is, like, Kudo, which also sounds like black. Like, Kudo. Uh, so I feel like it's black. So I feel like it's a, yeah, yeah, I feel like it's a thing. Especially because they're a visual K band, oh. you not could you not tell yeah, by the I music? Yeah, visual K band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by the look and the music. And all yeah. the all the other shit, all the <laughs> other shit going on. Oh god. Oh, speaking of emo, uh, hey, Ion is the yeah. other band member. He's a chuni. He never shuts up about being a god and stuff. Um, he's voiced by Koki Uchiyama, who's done so much stuff. Oh God! All right, here are some things. We're gonna we're gonna straighten it out. It's a thing we've talked about before. He was Ichika Orimura, the main guy at Nivitz Stratos. That's a thing. Um, he's also on Nisekoi as the main guy there, Raku Ichijo. Uh, he's also on Boku no Hero Academia as Shigaraki, the guy who melts stuff when he touches them. And he's Ventus and Roxas from Kingdom Hearts. All right. All right. Cool. Now, now we're moving on to the guy who talks like a samurai, Yaiba, voiced by Tetsuya Kakihara. Again, a lot of things. Here are some, here are some things. We're going to sh- straighten this out. Nambaka, he's Uno. So, you remember that guy, right? Yeah. You remember Dog Days? Yeah. Okay, cool. Gall. Yep. Gall. Right. The, 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 little, cat the little boy. Uh, how dare you, Yaiba is a fox. Oh, I'm sorry. How dare you? I know it's hard to tell because they're Sanrio characters, but how dare you? All right. Also, he was on Gurren Lagan as the main guy Simon. <laughs> He's on Fairy Tale as the main guy Natsu. <laughs> He's just a side character in this. One. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> also, he's in Danganronpa V3 because he's Kibo. All uh, right, moving on. All right, moving on. Rom, my favorite member of the group, voiced. Uh, he was a leopard or a jaguar. I can't necessarily tell. Um, they're very similar animals. Uh, his, his name is Ram. He's on. The, he's voiced by uh, Yoshimasa Hosoya, 
Yoshimasa Hosoya was Tokoyami, the Chunibyo uh, bird guy from Boku no Hero Academia. All right? Cool. He's Sosuke, the best friend of uh, Rin Matsuoka, who uh, appears in the second season of Free Eternal Summer. He was uh, the drummer on the TV show that's about jazz in the 1940s, uh, Sakamichi no Aporon, named Sentaro Kawabuchi. It's a really emotional TV show, and I love it, and we've talked about it before. Also, he was Kazuichi Soda in uh, fucking Danganronpa. So, all right. All right, all right. Can you give me track? Can you give me track of all this? Um, what's Ion's uh, animal? Uh, Ion is a lion, because Ion and Lion sound uh, similar. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a thing. Ahem. Kriti Krista, the enemies, I guess? Frenemies. Cause kind of Frenemies? Crazy. Yeah, because they, they do want to be friends. All right, cool. Uh, Rojia, the main girl, is voiced by Rina Hidaka. She was Nemesis on Turabiru. Do you remember that show I said yes. I want? Yeah, remember that show I wanted to talk about called Hensuki? The one where the, every girl is something, somebody creepy? Yeah. Okay, yeah, she's the girl who wants a slave. Yuika. Right. So that's a thing. Also, do you remember Gawarare? Yep. She's Sacrament. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another small girl. Alright, who? Cool. Check it out. Uh, ironically... Uh, the girl who says Desuwa inside of uh, Gawarare, Akane Mahosegawa, is here and is not Chu Chu, even though Chu Chu ends all of her sentences with Desuwa. Speaking of which, Sugino, the keyboard player, is voiced by Ai Kayano, uh, the keyboard player of Kriti Krista. Like I said, this is going to get confusing. Okay, so Ai Kayano is Akane Mahosegawa on Gawarare, the one who says Desuwa all the time. She's on Sai Kano as the writer girl, Utaha. She's on Konosuba as Darkness. And my personal favorite, another Danganronpa thing, she's Mikansumiki. <laughs> How many times did Tsukino talk? Once? Twice? Twice. <laughs> Twice. I counted. All right. Sweet. Um, Surezure Naru Ayatsuri Mugen Nan. <laughs> that's a band. <laughs> We're going to talk about one person in particular. Ah, that's her name. Uh, she plays the, sh- the Shamisen. And she's voiced by Sa- Saori Hayami. <laughs> Saori Hayami does a lot of things. Here's some examples. She was on uh, Ore Imo as a Yase, a character who came up a lot. She's on Yahari Ore, that uh, thing I don't like. As Yukino, huge bitch, Hinoshita. That's what I wrote here. I forgot I wrote that. <laughs> Yukino, quotation mark, huge bitch, close quotation mark, Yukino Shita. <laughs> also, she's Hakua from Kami no Mi. Is that, is that understood? <laughs> All right, cool. G Chronica, the 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 big fucking cool important guys. Right. Okay. Their singer Shuzo, whose name has to be separated by a star, otherwise you're spelling it wrong, is voiced by Mamoru Miyano, who was also on Free as Rin Matsuoka, the best friend of Sosuke, the guy I named earlier. Who is all? So that means that if you if you've been paying attention for the folks at home, Rom. And Shuzo, besides having a relationship in this show, have a relationship in Free. Mm. So, Ryuji Sakamoto from Persona 5, the best friend character, the first person you meet. Um, the person who is, vo- who is Osamu Dazai on Bungo Stray Dogs. I'm not going to stop bringing that up till I take the time to watch it. God, I love Osamu Dazai's writing. And also, he's on Death Note as Light Yagami. It's pretty important. All right, and the last one I wanted to bring up, uh, the evil music producer slash label manager, Dagger Morse. Okay, he's voiced by Takaya Kuroda. He's the singer in a real band, Takaya Kuroda and Goodfellas, sort of taking the, the impetus of Elvis Costello and whatever, and so many other musicians. Right now, he's on Mighty, Ma- Mighty Mashita Iruma-kun uh, as Grandpa Sullivan, the old guy. He was Hanzo Horibe. This is going to be a real reach, and I want you to follow me with this, but please. Uh, he was Hanzo Horibe, the owner of the agency that the Seko Boys work for in Seko Boys. Uh, and right. I want to I ask you something. Did his voice sound familiar in any shape or form? No. Really? Okay, cool. Because he's Kazuma Kiryu from Yakuza. Uh, really? And I'm done. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, now we can start. Fuck, all of those people do so many things. They had so much money. <laughs> they had so much money to spend on this. I mean, you're working with Sanrio. Sanrio has, like, international products and shit. 
Like you gotta have money. Um. All right. I guess. <laughs> I guess my first question for you is: Did you like Show by Rock? Yes. How much did you like it? What do you mean? Did you like it a lot? Was it like, oh, that was cool? I liked it a lot. <laughs> I love it. The second season. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Fine. Do you want to tell? It was like one of those um, shows. Like you watch it, and like oh, it's funny. Minutes fast. I didn't even notice. Yep. Oh fuck! We're done. Oh okay. What what about that time that um, Ram is beating up Ion on the rooftop, saying like you can't quit the band, I won't let you. Because <laughs> you the don't darkness just... took over his heart. The, yeah, the evil goo went in to take over his heart. Fuck! What a sentence. Did we do that last episode? I don't know. I don't remember. It's been too long. I'm confused. Uh, it was yeah. the evil. Was the evil goo a part of it? Because I thought we were talking about evil mist. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I feel like those are two different things. Because the evil goo reaches for the... Uh, um... <laughs> Shit. I'm sorry. It's just so funny to me because they have like a whole mythology that they don't explain to you that you're just supposed to know. And it's it like, yeah. Over the ones with, that lost their like musical or like something What's like that. What's the word? What's the word? I don't know. You remember? No? No. Don't even worry about it. It's not a big deal. Ah, uh. uh, fuck. I, I mean, it comes up again, but like, really, really, it's not a big deal. The word is melo- melodesian. It's, it, they have a melodesian stone in their heart. Uh, if, it, yeah. if, it, if it turns dark, they become a dark monster. And that's literally what they say. Mm-hmm. What about dark monster? It's, uh, it's amazing. Okay, um... Fuck. I mean, where do you want to go with this? What do you What do you have to say about What do you have to say about Show by Rock? I could go on for hours just about the like an arrangement of the theme song in the background for the whole show. Yeah, there's a lot of songs on the show. Everybody's got at least one song. Some people have two or three. And yeah, they arranged the opening song like every time they could. I mean, do you not want to hear it on a on a campanella so that it sounds gentle and beachy? when they go hang out on the beach you're right i do do you not do you not understand isaiah that um your youth is non-stop that's why they need the break you need to put it there everywhere well, i don't know what to talk about um i guess the sheep is weird the sheep is an alien mm-hmm. so that implies that there's space this is like a there's like a universe in this world made in a video game yeah. that was not explained before now She's uh, here to get information about the planet. Yeah, to get an energy source. Alright, here's the thing I'm going to tell you, just because just I know you're going to watch the second season anyway. That's important. Uh, it goes more into that. The entire second season is about space. Oh yeah, you were telling me that. that yeah. I was trying to take over the whole universe inside the game. Yes and no, it's a different person. Well, not I mean... Dagger, but I figure somebody... Oh yeah, somebody else. But so, the person that Dagger works for, because it turns out that the the Dagger thing was just one thing, that was part of a, a smaller part of a different thing. Also, do you remember that band that they mentioned just just briefly, uh, Ninjin Riot? No. They mentioned them at one line. No. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's really specific. There's a part where they're uh, after the like I want to say the third, the fourth episode, where they're like, "Oh, hey, did you hear like uh, some giant monster attack Ninjin Riot?" Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Guess what? The Indian Riot are a major part of the second season. Okay. They're from the future. All right. They're cyborgs. All right. I tell you this because this happens in the first five minutes. Of the second season? Yes. The first thing they do is show you what might happen in the dark future. There's no, there's no like, gradual, like, setup to this stuff. They just... No, no. we just here. No, no. <laughs> Were you told that there was a universe before the the sheep said, "Hey, I'm from another planet"? No. All right then. So why would they tell you this time? That's fair. Yeah. Also, um, you know how the enemy frenemy Brock Ben and this thing was like, uh, Kriti Krista. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. But hard evil this time. Uh. Also, the hard evil leader is Ly- is Ion's little sister. <laughs> She's just there. Is she really a god? Um, sort of. So he wasn't joking. Maybe he wasn't lying. <laughs> Maybe. Look, man, when you have enough power to destroy a planet, like, like, I mean, you're you're functionally a god, right? Yeah. Right. So I guess. Um, 
Let's talk about Tsuzuru. Uh, Tsure Tsure Ayatsuri Mugenan? Yeah, it's a sentence. Um, the Enka band? Yeah. Okay, why? What do you what do you want to say about them and how they say they're from Japan? Yep. And um, their drummer is just a robot. Their drummer is a robot? It is a Doruma with a cat face. Yeah. The person inside of it goes like, hey, what's up? And she sings. But she doesn't drum. No, the robot drums. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that. I feel that's, that's like... Clear. I feel like that's the easiest part of this to understand. I feel the larger part is um, the fact that they are legitimately Japanese in this fantasy world. <laughs> yeah, they kind of act like samurai. Like, they actually, the little, the, the two girls, one of them voiced by uh, Saori Hayami and Eri, the other one voiced by Eriko Matsumi, do talk like samurai. Like very traditional, like, oh, I haven't yeah, practiced enough. They say shit like Sesha. Which is not a word anyone uses anymore. Matter of fact, Yaiba uses that word too. Which is why I refer to him as the fox guy who thinks he's a samurai. I am I'm amazed. Also they, they treat her with a lot of respect. They bow down to the to the fox inside of the Daruma. They let her know, Good uh, my master, I cannot uh, thank you enough for everything that you've done for me up until this moment in time. Oh yeah, yeah. she could also float. She flies. Yeah. She flies. Yeah. Does that explain? No. Not at all. And she's really strong. She could have killed the frenemies, but... She probably could have killed the monster on her own. Clearly her, her attachment to her music is her is like much deeper than other people. Because her attachment to her music is also her attachment to her home culture. So that might have like a whole other dimension of like power because you know music is power here mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's a that's a thing that's a sentence i just said that's not a lie music is everything here. um also the singer from south from Te chronica tree chronica, tree chronica. <laughs> yeah shuzo yeah did they ever explain the the friendship between them or um the rivalry i don't know if i should tell you that because you want to watch the second season oh, they do okay never mind. No, I mean, like, what the details are. I feel like you should just see it and then find out. What the, I think my favorite part of Shuzo's thing is that no one knows what animal he is. Ah, uh, you're right. Everyone, everyone else has an animal. It's like, oh, it's a cat, oh, it's a rabbit, it's a whatever the fuck. It's, a, it's even some weird ones, like Crow's a hedgehog. It's like, a hedgehog? Yeah, a hedgehog. That's why every time Ion talks about him, he goes, oh, that lowly rodent, or whatever the fuck. But no one can name the animals that make up through through Chronica. They don't fucking know. They're just like, I don't know. I don't know. It's like not a cat, not a dog, I don't I don't know. Not a fox. Not a fox. Know. Definitely not a fox. Chipmunk. I don't know. No. Chipmunks no. don't have those ears. Yeah, chipmunks don't have those ears. That so no one knows. No one knows. Uh what I love about Shuzo is the is that the one time you see them have the argument, it looks like a scene from Prince of Stride. Well, like, uh, he walks past them and he goes like, and, he <laughs> and Rom goes like, I'm surprised you're here. What with someone of your stature? And he goes like, oh, oh, does that mean you don't forgive me yet? And he goes like, why should I? I don't want you to be popular. I'm here to create art. I guess you haven't changed, huh? And then he tries to punch him after he says, get on my stage before you talk to me like that. Yeah. It's, oh my God, it's so much. It's so much for something that is never explained in that season. Oh, fuck. Oh, they used to be part of a different band. They were in another Visual K band. Oh. Oh, did you see him when he was dressed up in the other Visual K band? The flashback scene? Yeah. Didn't you love it? It's so unnecessary, but yeah. No, shut up. It's everything. <laughs> no, shut up. It's everything. Oh, it's everything. Okay. It's everything. Maybe. You don't know. They call him the Galactic Prince. Maybe that has something to do with it, Isaiah. Oh, uh, so he's actually... Maybe? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> You'll find out. But you watch the second season. <laughs> After you meet the guys from the future Ninja Riot. <laughs> ah, sorry. Ninja... <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry. Ninja Riot is a, is a very different thing. Ninjin Riot. It's not just Ninja Riot. It's Ninjin Riot. <laughs> 
That's a that's a thing. I like how he's dressed. He he reminds me of uh, Tetsu right before he left Malice Miser <laughs> with a big old coat and cravat. It's great. It's a good look. Something else you want to talk about? <laughs> um, There's a lot here, lot man. But like, plots. <laughs> are they subplots? Don't subplots need to be resolved? I guess. I'm just saying. There's a lot of shit that just somebody says and then it never happens. Until next season. For example, do you remember those kids that are like in the fucking uh in the high school? I don't want to see uh, Musica or something. I don't want to go to West Musica. Yeah. Plas, it's Plas Magica. No, the city name. Oh, you mean Midi? Midi, yeah. Yeah, the the city is named Midi. That yes, yes, they do want to go to Midi City. What I was gonna say was, hey, guess what? They become a band, and they're all they're all in season two. <laughs> they didn't look like they were. They looked like they were just filler. No, shut up. Nothing's filler. Nothing's filler. Okay. It's all much more and and like. So much more than you ever thought it would need to be. I was going to say more than you thought, but actually, the more correct way to say it is it's more than it needs to be. More than it needs to be. Yeah. Because we don't need that. You, There's a lot of stuff here that's going on that could be removed and nothing would really change. Mm-hmm. Right? Like Shuzo having the ec- the old visual K-Band with ROM, that doesn't need to be a thing. Um... The Tsure uh, Zure Naru Ayatsuri Mugenan drummer not actually being a person. That didn't need to be a thing. Um, the Kriti Krista bit where they're like, Oh, Rosia forgot to talk cute. I mean, well, we all know that she only pretends to be cute. But like, I mean, why? Why did you tell me that? What was the point of that? Well, it wasn't to show that she's actually wants power and everything. No, because that's her being corrupted by the stone. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, see it what I mean? It started already. Okay. It started already. So, like, what's that about? Why? Why? Why even? Um, uh, yeah, Ion being insecure about being the bassist, in the, being the guitarist in the band. <laughs> Why? Why was that a whole episode? Well, they need to show, them, show what the stone could do. If you don't really love music anymore. But, like, they already did that before. With the yokai band. I don't know. Maybe that was literally like... <laughs> episode before that, remember? I don't know. <laughs> That's yeah. how he gets the evil goo? Yeah. So then you didn't need that, but you did it. Because don't you want to love Shingon Crimson? <laughs> you gotta love Shingon. Tell him to get their shit together every time. Yeah, look at Crow handing him his guitar and saying, Look, I'll forgive a lot, but I won't forgive you abandoning him. And he's talking about the guitar, and he says he was crying without you, and I was like, What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, I love this show. I love the show. Does so it have a soul too? Like, oh, uh, maybe, but it doesn't speak. But then again, he's a god, or is he not a god? Who knows? It's <laughs> um, called Holy Ark, by the way. Yeah. The guitar is named the Holy Ark, so that's the thing. Is it an actual thing or just the name? I don't. I who knows? <laughs> you saw when Crow turned his guitar into a giant fucking axe. The tomahawk. Yeah, it's called the Red Tomahawk, maybe. That's a thing. Maybe it's a special magic guitar. Who knows? Oh, there's like a... Is this like a even new with music or just your weapons? The uh, guitar instruments as weapons? Maybe. But then you think about it, Rom doesn't use his drums as his weapon. He just punches things. Yeah. Well, yeah, but also has like a sword guitar, so... He pulls a sword out of his guitar, that is correct. He pulls a sword out of his guitar. I that didn't is... see him pull a sword out of his guitar. <laughs> it's literally what he did. Uh, yeah. The headstock is the base of the sword. Yeah, you don't really need that. <laughs> Why? Um, no, shut up. It's there, though. And you're right. There was a lot of buzzing undertones in the show. And this gay. is a kid's show, right? And gay. Yeah. It's gay and lesbian because the entire time Retori looks like she desperately wants to fuck Sion. Doesn't everyone in the van want to fuck Sion? I don't know. Moa seems to just like having friends. Choo Choo maybe, but I thought he desperately wants to fuck Sion. Yeah, she takes pictures every second. She takes pictures every five seconds, and then there's a lot of times when Sion just says a sentence, and then Retori goes like, "Ah, oh, fuck." There's a time where they're hanging out in a room, and then she's like, they're like really close to each other next to the computer. And I thought he goes like, I need to get up. We gotta have snacks. Let's have snacks. Ah, uh, fuck. Because it's like, I was going to kiss you. And it's like, this is a bit much. Mm-hmm. So, 
from what I read, this was Sanrio's attempt to get in with an older audience, but I feel like older in this context because it aired at 9 means 15. Uh, Sanrio aims at children, children. So this is like heavier topics. I think this is like a teenager show. Okay. Even then, I don't know if I don't know if teenagers are all about like uh, wondering whether or not it's okay to try to fuck your friend. I think they are. Feel that you feel that way. You feel that that's a very common feeling. I wouldn't say it's common, but I feel like it happens enough to be discussed. Yeah. Okay. Fair point. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll hold that L. Um. Shit, man. I don't know. There's a lot of places this could go. Um. Like, what do you what do you want to do? I like the part where they were trying to break up, but then um, no. Listen to this music. Listen to the song you wrote for us. Does that mean that this was always a stepping stone? That she cries and she plays the song, but then she goes, I'll be honest, I wasn't lying to you. The darkness made me express my true feelings, my dark feelings. Oh, evil goo. Oh, evil goo, what do you do? Evil goo apparently destroys the world because that's what the people from the future see. By the way, can I just say, on the topic of evil goo and other people affected by evil goo, <laughs> um, what the, who the, who the fuck are you, Yokai Band? Who are you? I want to know more about you because you showed up three times and you had an entire episode dedicated to you. So I'm going to assume there's something going on there. Oh, they don't explain more. Not that I remember. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll admit, it's been a while, but I don't believe that there's ever a moment where they explain any of that. That there's just a yokai planet. Or I mean, a yokai city. Oh, and there's just the van that gives water. Oh yeah! Oh fuck, I oh. Sh- uh, Shizuku's secret mind. You're right. They're from a, a they're from a they're from an island that is just water. It's a hustle though, cause you only get two. I mean, you gotta get that money. Look, man, <laughs> you gotta sell merch. Do you remember that part where like Shingon Crimson's are like, dude, do you think we should start selling merch at our next show? Yeah. And then Rama's like, shut up, we don't need gimmicks. And it's like, no, we do need money though. <laughs> yeah, maybe we don't need gimmicks, but we do need money though. Oh boy. Remember but yeah. When Ron I, told him- uh, Plasma Magica, you don't need uh, fancy costumes. You, you don't need fancy costumes. Important. Even though they're dressed in fancy costumes. Yeah. They're ag- actually dressed in fancy costumes with like spikes and leather and straps and buttons. Like, that's ironic coming from him. He's dressed in like a fucking fur vest with no shirt and like fancy jeans and shit. And like, he got yeah, so he- mad he walked out. You know why? I think that's because he was remembering his uh, ex bandmate Shuzo. Yeah. It was like, it was like I want to be famous. And he's like, fuck that guy. I want to make music. It doesn't need to be about fame. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. That's like a thing. <laughs> it's a thing that doesn't get resolved in the entire season. It's just the thing. The, I guess the resolution is at the end when he gives him a thumbs up. Yeah. And goes like, see, we saved the world. <laughs> thumbs up. Good job. People didn't die. I mean, yeah, all right, all right. That's a, yeah. Wait, what is dagger? What is dagger? I, I, <laughs> all right. Look, <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I'm gonna guess that he's an axolotl uh, tadpole. That's real specific. I know, but axolotls have come up in Sanrio things before, so I think this would make sense. It would also explain his bizarre color. Can I, since you're on Dagger, hey, can I just applaud Takaya Kuroda's evil laugh? Oh, that was yeah. a real good evil laugh. Mm-hmm. Like, at the end of the, the season, when, like, damn, that was a real good evil laugh. How do you feel about the fact that we never get to see what Grateful King looks like? Uh. He's just shadows weird. with the Rizento. I thought we were supposed to guess he's, like, um, Elvis Human? or something. Yeah, you would think, but his Rizento is not like Elvis's hair. Elvis had a quaff. He has a straight-up Rizento. Be some real person. Do you know anyone I mean, that has a Rosenthal and plays guitar like that? I mean, yes. There's the singer to Cool's Rockabilly Club. Yeah, maybe I don't. That, I don't... <laughs> maybe he's the singer to Cool's Rockabilly Club. Does he say rock and roll? Hell yeah. Yeah, maybe. He calls everybody baby and equal and like good boys and shit. So maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know. I do love the bit. Where like um, he talks like a woman when he's the guitar when he's Strawberry Heart, mm-hmm. and then uh, fucking Crow is like you're gross, 
You're gross because you're an adult man and you talk like a like a, a young girl, and I don't like it. When um Crow is like sees Grateful King, and he goes like, "Why is everybody calling Mr. Barry? That's weird." I thought I thought the Barry was the guitar. Does she not know who Grateful King is? And then he, and then he does the voice again, and he goes, "Oh fuck! Oh I oh I hate this! I hate this all so much." <laughs> because not only did I insult the person I admire the most, but also the person I admire the most is a weird creep. All of this sucks, man. I don't, I don't know what to say to that. That he like put his spirit into the guitar to send it across dimensions to save the town. Oh yeah, that doesn't get explained either. No, that's it. How, and how did you get her there? That explain it. Okay. The guitar, the spirit of the magic guitar. All right. No, that's it. I'm just suspecting more explanation. No. Because you guys have more detail and a lot of other stuff. The stuff yeah, the but stuff that's important. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say they give detail to the things that don't matter. They're the things that you could remove from the show and it wouldn't lose anything. That's the stuff that matters, Isaiah. How does magic work? What are the, what are the twelve cities that they name dropped in the fucking beginning of the show? Huh? No, none of that. That's stupid. Wait, is are there other planets? Because that girl just says she's daily. No, shut the fuck up. It doesn't matter. And her mom looks just like her. Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't matter. Um. Yeah, shut up. They also even say in the show, "What about reality?" No, shut up. <laughs> no, shut up. I I love when they when they first reveal she's from another. She's like she tells them, "Hey, I'm from another dimension." And then, and then like uh, he goes, does that mean you have to go back? It's like, ah, uh, shit, I don't. Mm. And then she runs away crying. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty intense. But then I remember the first scene, well, like the 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 part where she finally joins the band in the first episode, where like she goes, oh man, I could join the band. That's awesome. Wait a second. And then it cuts to like her thinking. It was like, leave the dimension, go back home, or join a band. And she keeps thinking about it, and she goes like, "I should really figure out how I got here, why I got here." Yeah, as far as I can But like, nah. But fuck that! I want to be part of a band. So yeah. This time even passed. I think a day passed. Oh okay. Cause, cause at the end of the show, she literally goes back to school the next day, and nobody says anything. No, she still so, listens to the music band. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Now she has the courage to say it. <laughs> now she has the courage to say, I want to be part of your band. <laughs> and guess what? That's a plot point in season two. That's a thing. Oh, really? Oh. I told you, all the <laughs> stupid things matter. You're overthinking it. Or rather, you're underthinking it. Underthinking. Yeah. You're overthinking the unimportant parts and underthinking the important parts. Because it turns out the important part is whether or not Ion's little sister is going to destroy the universe. Also, aliens. Um, yeah, it's like... A lot of detail. Oh, the egg. The egg what? manager. What about the egg, the tea egg that is the manager? Um. He turns into that handsome man in a suit at the end, or what? What about that? Her? And he just climbs. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, that also. He climbs. They just show his butt cheeks instead of the other ones. The other girl. Haha. -ha. That wasn't funny. <laughs> wasn't it? No. <laughs> it's a kid's show. See, I think you're wrong. Yeah, I, I think you're wrong. <laughs> I think you're wrong about that. Like you're expecting the other girl when that was the egg. Yeah, it's the egg. Um, also, do you mean the secretary, Angelica? Yeah. yeah. Who is the wolf? Yeah. How does everyone have a thing? How do they do this? Is she important too? Maybe. Okay. I'm just I'm just gonna answer maybe for most of these things because I want you to really, really go into them and see what's going on. But she drives a motorcycle, and she like climbs the walls, and she's like a she's spy. 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 She's wearing a spy cat suit. She's a spy. And they knew the Grateful King was inside uh, Universal Music Studios. Not Universal. That's a real thing. Visuals. I was it. It was Unicorn. Oh, Unicorn Visual Studios. Yeah, <laughs> Universal's a real company. Oh, yeah. I said, don't get us fucking. Don't get us sued for slander, saying okay. that Universal's evil. I mean, wasn't the show trying to tell us that? Maybe. Who knows? Shut up. They didn't say it, though. <laughs> they said unicorn. You don't know. You don't know that. Uh, you don't. You don't know that. Yeah, that was, that was just weird. I love the part where the Shingon Crimson guys run into another egg. 
That is a Mataki. Oh yeah, that's on too. Guys, I guess Mataki are just around. Aren't you hungry? Come with me. Fuck, I love that Bomb just dresses in a suit out of nowhere. Oh yeah. Just immediately gets dressed in a suit, fixes his hair, puts on glasses. Excuse me, sir. Hello, how are you? And then the guys are like, he is the only one of us with a full-time job. Clearly, you can trust him. He gets stuff done. He gets stuff done. He does all the accounting for the band. He's the leader of the band in more ways than one. It makes me think of X Japan, where like um, Yoshiki is the leader of the band and he's the drummer, but like he does, he has the most experience with music, so he does a lot of that. He does a lot of promotional stuff. He like runs record companies and shit. I was like, oh, that's Rom. Okay, it's just Rom. As is voiced by Yoshimasa Hosoya. <laughs> oh, God. I just, I'm amazed by that. And he spends all his time giving them, like, speeches, and then they, like, cry about the beauty of his masculinity. It's great. It's great. It's amazing. They get those sharp faces from, like, Jose manga. There's a lot of animation things. There's a lot of random jumps to a different style, and I love it. Oh yeah, the, every clothes has a lot of detail in them too. Yeah, yeah, and then there's the CGI bits that look like they very clearly spent money on it. This show has a lot going on, man. Like the hairs are different colors. Uh, I really, I, I, I'll say, I said it before, I'll say it again. I really do like the look of um, Shuzo from Tree Chronica. I like he his hair. Seems like he's really hard to draw. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine how much work that is. You gotta have like a what do you call them? The the reference sheet. They have like the two poses, and then you're like, all right, basically think about this. These are the colors you have to use. This is how it looks. He's so exact. His name has to have a star in it. You're pronouncing it wrong. I don't even know what that means. But this is just the thing. Isn't it fantastic? Yeah, he's... He's ridiculously... <laughs> unnecessarily... <laughs> he's unnecessary... Drawing. Everything. He's just unnecessary here. <laughs> everything. In every way. Do you remember that time at the beginning where he, like, smashes that car out of the way with his limousine? His and it takes a ass limousine. Yeah, I was gonna say, it takes a full six seconds to see him. You counted. Hell yeah. Okay. It takes a full six seconds... And you just watch something and go, like, how long is this fucking car? <laughs> and then he says, I'll be like, hey, man, let's go. <laughs> I love you, kitten. You're doing great. Yeah, keep it up. That's it. <laughs> Fuck, I love it. I love it so much. And the fact that he was in another band with Rom. And it's like, what was that about? What was going on? Well, how do you guys know each other? Wait, did she just split to be rich? What's going on? I don't understand. And it's like, no, shut up. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it right now. Worry about it later when the universe is falling apart. And you have aliens trying to attack us. I really want to see the budget for this. I would also like to find out how much money Sanrio kicked into this. Because, like, the the first one was made by, um... Fucking Bones. And the second one was made by Kinema C Citrus. By the way, Kinema Citrus... Uh, no, wait. Sorry. The first one was made by... The first two were made by Bones. The third one that's coming out that's a sequel series is going to be made by Kinema Citrus. Uh. That's right. Shion's story ends with uh, Show by Rock Sharp. But the legacy of Show by Rock will not end. It's, it's apparently January 9th you're going to get uh, Show by Rock Mashu Mairish. Uh, completely different people. Still about music. Are you excited for this completely different thing that's also going to be bad shit insane because of street musicians? <laughs> Yeah. Like, I watch it, I'm just like, wow, I can't stop watching this. Yeah, it's very dog days in that way. It's, like, hard to stop looking at it, like, alright, that's it's ve To me, it's very dog days in that sense. We're like, yeah. what is dog days? Like, nothing? What is this? Too much. Um, Too much. But, <laughs> but also, I can't look away. I, I, ha I, I can't. I can't stop. And it's not bad. It's like, it doesn't suck, which is the weird part. How do you describe this? <laughs> I, hmm, that's gonna be the problem when we get to the food, isn't it? Yeah. Like what? What? What do I say? <laughs> it's so much. But it's good. And it's good, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's it, it's a lot for you to digest at once. 
Yeah, you, you, you like look at it and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't. Wait, that's a thing? Yeah, also this. Wait, also that? No. Actually, that's not a thing for now. It's going to be a thing later. What do you mean later? There's a lot more going on. Um, is there a character we didn't talk about yet? Uh, I, I mean, uh, the samurai, I guess? Oh, A and... Yeah, the, the samurai, A and Un. I thought I did. I, I mean, like, really we mentioned them. We mentioned them. I don't know if we said anything else, but that's because they don't really do much. They just they just like bow at their master and like take lessons. And then there's that one time where they're at their master's house after she got attacked by the dark monster. And they're like, what do you think we should do? Uh, I'm sorry we let you down. And she goes, no. And then she thinks to herself, that girl. And it's Cyan. <laughs> that oh, girl. Yeah, everyone, the just power to turn around. everyone just knows. They just know. <laughs> they just know. Because they meet her and they're like, clearly it's you. Except for Shingon Crimsons. They're not smart enough to realize what's going on. But everyone else knows. It takes them a while to realize they're in the at the end at the dark. What do you, I don't even understand why it changes, but <laughs> whenever the dark, the dark uh, monster attacks, yeah, they have to change the whole stage. The, the, yeah, the dimension. Yeah. The other realm, as I've been referring to it. I don't know what the fuck it's called. I just know it's a thing that happens. That's why they turn into their animal forms. But you can see it on TV screens. You can see it on the TV screens. Because they understand. Everyone else knows. I, I, I think we're the only ones who don't know. But that's because they're not telling us. Because we're just supposed to know. You know? It's only anime, right? This is a manga for this. No. No. It was a game. And the game doesn't have a narrative. This is just the thing they made up. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's like they threw everything in, like, animes they like and just threw it in here. Yeah. It's every anime, but also no anime because it's only one thing. Because <laughs> you have, like, the masculine friend bonding thing with the Shingon Crimson guys. You have the girl version of the bonding thing with Plasmagica. You also have, like... A magic part. Yeah, I, I was going like to say, you also have the, bo- the magic part. But also you have like the the like the dark forces working in the background, right? Mm-hmm. With with and also technically you can look at it as like commentary on the music industry, because <laughs> oh, yeah. the, the most evil person is the person who just wants money out of musicians and wants to use them. He literally traps a guy in a room and says, "Write a song," which is a thing that's happened to musicians before. <laughs> and then he lied to him. And he lied anyway. You thought you'd get out just with those words. Yeah, you thought you would, you could believe a verbal promise, dipshit. <laughs> Should have got that in writing, and it's like that is too real. And he always talks about contracts. He always talks about contracts. The entire thing is about getting people signed to his label so you can abuse them financially. <laughs> That's too real. I don't know. It's too much. I don't know. He also makes the little he throws the little girls aside, but he uses them to make money. That's what I said. Yeah. He abuses them financially. <laughs> how, much, how much you want it, but they only get like 10% of what they make. Yeah. If that. Oh, man. I, oh, jeez. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's the, like, the crossing dimension isekai thing with Cheyenne's entire existence. There's also the place that just has like ghouls. So it's like another layer of animals. Like, yeah, there's a yokai world. That's the part that I was upset about because I'm like, someone explain this. Is this by Japan or is this completely separate from Japan even though yokai is a specifically Japanese thing? And it's like, no, shut up. <laughs> I was like, no, I want to know. I was like, never going to come up again. God damn it. God damn it. That doesn't come up. It should. <laughs> <laughs> it should, shouldn't it? You know what else? You know what does come up though? You know, decks come up a a a band that is made of idols that are all uh, rich people that are assigned to a label called Judas. All right, that's a thing, and I can't tell you whether or not they're on the side of the aliens. Okay. The aliens are the thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. The second season goes places. It's like, well, are we gonna talk about genocide? I guess we're talking about genocide today. In it's this even darker. Oh yeah, yeah, man. It opens with the planet dying, and then Ninja Ninja Ninjin Riot going. We have to stop that future. We came from the future to stop it. <laughs> it's Terminator. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, and then the, the, it turns out the Terminator is is Ion's sister, and it's like, what? What am I looking at? 
what's going on? I I'm was pretty like, sure the writer of this chuckle. He has to like chuckle. Oh. It's a lady. <laughs> oh, she she has yeah. to chuckle. She has to be loving it. She has to be loving it. It's fucking great. Fun fact: the woman who wrote this show, uh, Toko Machida, has written a lot of other things, like a lot of other things. Some episodes of uh, Hitsugi no Chaika, the thing about the girl with the the coffin. Some episodes of Lucky Star. Some episodes of Koraba Zombie Desuka. And she's done a lot of stuff. I, I I imagine she just put all of it together. She had the money. <laughs> they gave her the money. They literally said, "Here's like two million dollars. Go." Go. <laughs> Do what you think makes sense for Show by Rock. All right. All right. Oh. Uh, by the way, in the game, when the Melodesian Stone turns black, you have a boss battle. So I think that's that was the dark monster thing. Ah, oh, that makes more sense. It doesn't add more context. I'll tell you that much. So if you play the game, it's literally just the thing you see on the phone. Yeah, it's it's love life. Mm-hmm. You know, like like it, it's not really different. Except there's 26 bands in the game, so. There's a lot of places this show could have gone. And I'll admit, they jammed a lot more bands in this than I expected. And you could also, like, buy their albums, right? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, you could. This is a money fountain. This is a money fountain. So if they you actually have... gain money from this. Hell yeah. I can't believe that they went in the deficit because they people sell, like, pillows and cards and DVDs and CDs. And then the game brings in its own money. And um, yeah. Like, I cannot believe that this like, this wouldn't have made them more money in retrospect. I mean, it, it continued long enough for them to decide, what if we just start a sequel that has nothing to do with the old one, but keeps the name? Because fuck it, people like Show by Rock. And you're right, I do. You got me. You got me. There's a new game that's coming out, and the TV show is going to coincide with the game. Because Xi'an's story <laughs> is done, I guess. Uh, second season ends weird. I... Yeah, that's one way to put it. I need to watch the second season. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, that's why I asked if you liked it, because I was like, if you like it enough, trust me, the second season is just as fucking bad shit bonkers. I, I remember when this show, the second season was coming out, and like people were talking about it, because it didn't come out that long ago. It came out like 2016, and and like I was following it, and people were like, hey, did you see the first one? I was like, no, what is it? It's like, okay, if you think this is nuts, you should see what led up to this. And I was like, what? And they were right. Like, watching Show by Rock and then going back to Show by Rock Sharp is like, wait, excuse me. So now we're going to talk about aliens? It goes, yes, but also Bud Virgin logic. Who the fuck is that? Okay, here we go. It turns out it's not about, the, uh, it's not about fucking Midi City. It's about the sound universe. That is the name. Sound universe. Okay. Inside the game. Yes? Oh, yeah, you told me it might affect the real world. Maybe? <laughs> okay. I'm just I'll, saying. I'll just, I'll just have to watch the second season. I'm just saying. <laughs> it was that much. I don't know. <laughs> she has writer's block, and then the robot comes out of the game and says, we have to go. And she says, what? And then goes back into the game. Okay. And that's when they're like, hey, uh, so we're here to stop the universe from being killed by uh, the, the alien warlord. That is the person behind Dagger Morris. I was like, what? Yeah, shut up. I was like, okay, I guess we're starting now. Oh, great, there's like six more bands I have to remember. Oh, fuck. Like, like the, the, the band that is like a Sentai hero team by Ganba 5. That's a thing. I'm not fucking with you. That's a thing. Are they aliens? Yes. Maybe. <laughs> I think. I don't really know. They never... Look, they hold a superhero TV show on a rooftop. How about that? This I can say for sure. Okay. Because during the day they work at the shop, that the rooftop, that uh, the shop in which they have this show on top of the rooftop. Um. Okay. Is it food time? I guess I don't fucking know, man. What else do you want to say? There's, there's so much here that I don't know how to explain. So like, is there anything else you want to say besides um, fuck yeah, I love the music? I'll put that out there. Jacqueline could get dry, and then she would die. Ah, uh, yeah, cause she's a frog. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I love that you just like sit low and like Yeah. Yeah, she's a frog. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's where we at. <laughs> what, All can, right. what can I say? <laughs> cool, food. Food, no, okay. fucking food. 
Okay, it's something that I enjoy but feels like a lot. <laughs> kind of. Does tiramisu feel like a lot? Is it does it have? No, I was just gonna say like when you eat it, does it feel like you're having a lot of things at once? Yeah. To me. Yeah. Hmm. I was gonna say, do you remember how we had Good Job Bua's chicken me- uh, chow mein fun? Mm-hmm. I was gonna say this is the house special chow mein fun where they shove all the meat in there. And you're you're like, right, there's some meaty parts. Fuck, I don't know what's... Oh, there's a lot here. But my thing about Chow Mai Fun is it's not it's not crazy sweet or anything, you know? And with the amount of times that Red Tori is like, God, I want to fuck Xi'an, I feel like we should make it sweet. Mm. So something's not sweet in a lot. Could it be alcohol? I guess it could be alcohol. It's pretty nuts. But isn't that too adult for the show? That feels like a bit much, yeah. I don't feel like it's... It's like Gawarade crazy where I'm just like, I think I'm done. I, this I feel is like the crazy you wanna keep flashing. This is the crazy I wanna I wanna sit down for. This this is the the kind of crazy where like um I'm dating this girl, she's nutters, but she's not violent nutters, so I'm just gonna sit this one. I'm gonna sit on this one. Uh I don't know man. I don't know, this is nuts. I fuck. Do you feel like it could be ice cream? Oh, yeah, we didn't do ice cream. What what type of ice cream are you thinking? Birthday cake ice cream. Yeah, that's exactly that's what I was a thinking. lot. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a bit much. I don't know if we need to do this ice cream and it's like, no, it's good. And you're like, like you're right. You're right, ice cream. You were right, I'm stupid. Yeah, birthday cake or cake batter. Yeah. Yeah, birthday cake or cake batter ice cream. I wanna say birthday cake because that's the one where they throw in sprinkles and frosting. And I'm like, fuck, I'm not, I'm not sure. It's like <laughs> sweet on top of it. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit much. <laughs> but it's you still a bit like it. Much, but I still like it. Like, I've eaten, like, birthday cake ice cream at Cold Stone, and I've been like, damn, this is good. I'm not going to eat this every day, but damn, this is good. Yeah. I, it, so is that, do you think birthday cake ice cream yeah, works? Yeah, that works. All right, cool, sick. All right, everybody shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, because it's time for the news. So, what? I'll go first. Yeah, go. Um, Ultimate Chicken Horse has remote play. Oh, Yay. shit! That's awesome! So, you actually... yeah, yeah, only on. one person needs the game. You could join up to three people. That's so fucking cool. Dude, do you want to, like, play Ultimate Chicken Horse? Sure. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You just right-click. Like, I see you playing it. I click right-click, remote play. Yeah, that's so fucking cool. Aw, oh, man. That's awesome. I mean, shit, yeah. Um, I sh- we should explain it, just in case. Oh, you do know people know Ultimate Chicken? Oh, you know what? Fuck, I don't know um, why I assumed people would know Ultimate Chicken Horse. Cause it's a good thing, I guess. It's such a good game. I all right, yeah. Everyone I don't know what good things are, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's not true. That's yeah. not true. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, Ultimate Chicken Horse is a creative platformer game, so. The goal is to get the most, to complete the platform you create. And you get little mascots like a chicken, horse, uh, a raccoon. Like cheap. Cheap. Cheap cool. Uh, yeah. As the, the name implies, you get chicken, horse. There's, there's many more options, but yes. So, you and your friends or whatever create the obstacles to complete the course. And, um,. Yeah, you gotta just try to screw each other over, or make it as far as possible, so only you can make it. Yeah, I was gonna say, if everybody, um, if everybody makes it, you don't get points. So you literally have to make it, like, difficult enough for you to succeed, but to fuck other people over. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. Okay. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I got two things. Uh, first thing. Do you remember Saint Onisan? I feel like I've mentioned it to you before. Maybe we haven't talked about it. Saint Onisan is the manga about Jesus and Buddha as apartment roommates. Uh, yeah, I remember you mentioned it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. There's gonna be a live action movie of it, and there's already like stills. And I'll admit, the 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 guy who is Jesus, he it looks exactly like the manga. The guy who is Buddha is clearly wearing a headpiece. All right. <laughs> so yeah. It's uh, the guy who's Jesus is going to be Kenichi Matsuyama, who was um, in the fucking Death Note movie as L. Do you remember those live action Death Note movies with the CGI Ryuk? Yeah. 
Yeah. He was also in um, Detroit Metal City. I, I think I've told you about Detroit Metal yeah, City. I yeah, so the live action movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's the main guy. And it's great. It's a really good job. I love the Detroit Metal City movie. And the guy who's going to be Buddha is going to be Shota Sometani. And he was in the live action movie for Bakuman, you know that thing that's about guys drawing manga. And he's also in the main in the live action movie of Kiseju, the thing about the alien parasites. Yeah. Yeah, so that's cool. He was also in the live action movie of Tokyo Tribe. I really like Tokyo Tribes. It's like a really weird, like urban youth fucking street violence manga. Um, okay, cool. Second thing I have to say, guess what? They already said I, I say this because the news came in literally four hours ago. Show by Rock has already been uh, kickstart like uh, uh, put in for a fourth season. All right. How? How does it get? I don't know. I so guess they everyone's gr- in. Like we're in. Yep. Yep. So yeah, uh, a website that of be- uh, uh, Animage Plus, the website that belongs to a publisher, uh, said, "Hell, hell yeah! Guess what?" Um, season four is gonna go back to Xi'an and shit. And I'm like, what? I thought the third season was gonna be a different thing. I thought we were gonna follow her. No, fuck that. We're going back. We're going back. So yeah, that or they might just appear. The ref- the statement is that they will be a part of the fourth season. There's no specifics. But hell yeah, hell yeah, man. As we were talking about Show by Rock today, the announcement came in. Fuck you. Show by Rock continues to breathe. This makes so much money for us. Not even. I mean. If you could make as much money as Show by Rock makes, why not keep doing it, right? Yeah. Why not keep doing it? What reason do you have to not do it? That's uh, that's pretty nuts. That we're talking about it, and also, wow, here we go. Oh, hey, also, this is a thing. I don't know if it's like newsworthy, but it's a thing I wanted to mention. Uh, you, you, we were talking about Idol Master, right? And how Hibiki is here. Mhm. Right. Okay. Haruka got married. Oh, really? Yeah. Eriko Nakamura put up a Twitter post that was like, so, I turned 38, pretty pretty nuts, and uh, I turned in my marriage registration form. It's like, oh, shit, you're getting married. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Good for you, lady. Good for you. You met someone who interested you enough to get married. Good for you. 38. I mean, I'm not going to say, like, you shoot your ass shot. I guess she was super busy. I mean, she's the voice of the main girl from Idol Master. Yeah. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time doing like audio shows and like episode recordings and voice recordings for like lines in the games. There's a lot to it. Alright. Time to get hype. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit, get hype. You know Business Fist? Yeah, Business Fist is a TV show. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. I saw the first episode. I want to look for the rest. Business Fish for the, I mean, I mean, I don't know if anyone else knows Business Fish. <laughs> Do people know Business Fish? It's a GIF on Facebook it, Messenger. It's a bunch of stickers on it's Facebook like Messenger. Stickers. Yeah. I uh, I mean, yeah, it was invented by the by um the Chinese company. I mean, the Japanese company Quan. They 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 have a web comic about Business Fish, mm-hmm. and suddenly they were like, "Fuck it, let's go all the way." I was like, seriously? I was like, yeah, Business Fish gets a TV show. And I was like, damn, all right. I don't even know what to do with that. So, yeah, we've used Business Fish on many occasions as a sticker. Because, <laughs> haha, Business Fish. But, like, seriously, it has a show now. <laughs> and it's like, fuck yeah. Business Fish is going to take over the world. And I'm like, I, I'm not against this. I'm not against this future where my business is decided by a, a fish in a suit. He gets work done, though. I mean, he's a businessman first and foremost. Fish second. That's that's. <laughs> Did that even make sense? You didn't say anything, and I'm like, what? What? What are you? What? What's going on? It makes sense. Okay, he cool. He takes his business that seriously. Yeah, yeah. You didn't say anything, and I'm like, I don't. Oh fuck! Did that not go over? No, it made perfect sense. So All I right, like, cool. I thought you were just gonna go to the next one. <laughs> yeah, good. Cool. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I was asking for confirmation. <laughs> I was very concerned, and I was like, "Fish, businessman first, fish second, and then silence." I, I'm at this point. I'm just so used to it. I'm like, "Yep." <laughs> You're desensitized. Yeah, that's crazy. All these little details, like, "Oh, that shouldn't be a thing," is a thing. So, yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Cool. Um, because this show is Manga Palette, and I read manga for fun, I'm, I'm going to talk about a manga. <laughs> hey, y'all. Guess what? I'm talking about a manga. This is, this is a thing I do. Uh, if anything, I, I feel like I might have mentioned this before, but I'm not sure? So, um, hey, have I ever told you about, um, Gyaru Gohan? Yeah. I have? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, Gyaru Gohan went in a very different direction than I anticipated, and I don't know how to feel about it. What direction are you going? I, I feel like he's considering fucking his student. Uh, not the other way around? I was not anticipating it. Well, she, that, she was already in. That was not a debate. Oh, so... She's still in. Okay. That was not a debate. So they're actually gonna... I'm just saying now he's noticing how cute she is. And I'm like, I don't know if that's a thing you should be thinking about as an adult man. I believed you had beliefs and now I'm not sure. But that's also because he's not sure. Like, like people have uh, referred to them as a couple recently. And he's like, oh, fuck, is that is that how this looks? Should I be, like, tighter about What do I do? What do I do? Remember that chapter I showed you? Where I was like, oh, they went to the... They went to the beach. Mm -hmm. Right? And then I showed you the picture, and you were like, holy shit! Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they went to a... He went to a wedding. He went to a wedding for somebody he knew um, in in school. And he went with his friend, uh, Nagisa. Remember the teacher? Who he, who he, like, was friends with in college? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So... Okazaki's just working at the fucking place. I was like, what? I can't believe you're working at this catering place. And I was like, yep. And I was like, oh, okay. Fine. That's cool. And and she keeps going over and putting down bread. Like, hey, hey, hey. Hey, you're right here, right? Hey, you're right here, right? You're good. You're good. She keeps throwing him bread and shit. Then, like, when they do the throw the bouquet thing, Nagisa catches the bouquet. I was like, oh, that's so nice. Have some words. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. And then, like, uh, the teacher was like, oh, man, she looks kind of sad. I know what to do. And he grabs a bunch of fucking flowers and gives it to her as if it's a bouquet. Uh -huh. And she's like, she's like, what? It's like, you want to catch the bouquet, right? Oh, shit, did I fuck up? I'm sorry. And she just throws herself on him, and he goes like, oh, you like it? Well, I mean, and I'm like, no, that shows you're kind of interested. Hey, 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 you're a teacher. Hey, hey, he what's forgot. going on here? What's going on here? But she's cute, though. Mm. Mm. Oh, actually, that reminds me. I, re I was reading another manga that is actually literally that. Oh, a teacher and a student. Yeah, oh. but like, but like, not. It starts with the t with the student just going, "Hey, I love you," and he goes like, "Okay, that's that's funny. That's that's weird. I'm not I'm not okay with that." But like, haha. But then like, she gets real hard on it, and is real serious. And then he goes, okay, now maybe I'll think about it. Uh, you got to me. And then the first chapter ends with another girl standing up and writing on the board, teacher, I'm in love with you. And he goes, fuck. So yeah, that's a that's a thing. And that one, I feel, at least because I, I only read the seven chapters that I saw, um, is actually going to be, I'm going to go out with both of you. Because he, he gets to the point where he's like, uh, I don't, I feel that I can't ignore either of your feelings. So I don't know if I can actually pick, if you get what I'm saying. And the girls, instead of going like, fuck you, are like, that's fine. It's like, really? And like, yeah, it's fine. It's cool. And it's like, well, well, shit. I, I, I didn't anticipate this. But hey, sometimes the, the, OT, uh, the OTT works, you know? Mm, so, yeah. So maybe that's just the thing. Does that have any like other plot to it besides just, I like it you? I also think you're kind of cool. <laughs> nope. Nope, that's it. The title says what the plot is, if you think about it. The title is literally, um, Teacher, I Like You. And it's that is people. the whole manga. No one specified that it was one person. Yep. So that, that works. That was on a the, real gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm on a roll. Hey, let's talk about another thing that's kind of similar. Um, so there's a thing called My Daughter's Friend. And that, that's what it's about. Okay. This guy, he's shitty with his daughter. And he spends all his time at work. And he meets this girl who's, like, kind of bummed and kind of, and like, messed. And then she, like, cheers him up. And they end up becoming really friendly. 
And then she reveals that uh, she is a teenager, and he goes like, oh, fuck, that feels weird. She was like, yeah, but don't you still like me? He's like, I mean, I do, but this is, like, weird. And then and then it is revealed to the uh, to the reader rather than to the him specifically uh, that that is the girl who was best friends with his daughter who became a shut-in. The story has advanced to the point where the girl's not a shut-in anymore. She's sort of, like, fixing her relationship with her dad. I was like, that's cool. That's awesome. But also, he's, like, sort of dating her friend. And it's getting pretty nuts. What does that mean? What do you mean? Sort of dating. They're like going out and they've made out twice. So they're dating. I mean, yes and no. Yes, insofar that they do things that are dating, but no, insofar that no one knows, nor do they mention it to anyone, nor do they even act like it's a thing. Because he is a man in his mid-40s and she is 17. (laughs) So, So, yeah. They are dating, but they're not. The, the chapter that just came out um, was uh, where the girl invites herself over to her friend's house because she wants to spend time with her boyfriend. <laughs> okay. Get it? So she has a boyfriend, too. No. Her dad. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so she knows about the... She's like, no? No. Oh, oh they never mention who it is. No. Oh, okay, I get it. Again. Yeah. Again, I cannot repeat how much they don't tell anyone anything. So she mentioned she had a boyfriend. She mentioned she has... Some... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she goes like, Dad, you've been really happy lately. You're not dating anyone. He's like, no, how could I be dating anyone? Your mother died a year ago. I was like, yeah, you shouldn't. And he goes like, right, right. And then goes, I'm dating your friend. Like in his head. Wait, isn't dating someone a good thing after... You, you would somebody. think, you would think, but the thing is, the girl blames her father being a workaholic for being the reason that he wasn't around for her mother's death. Like I said, they have issues. They had issues. Only now is the relationship starting to fix itself. Oh, so, yeah, this would be a fucking landmine if she found out. And the girl sent them a text. It's like, hey, let's get hyped for a Saturday where I'm going to come over to your house. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get through it without your daughter finding out. It's like, that's not funny. <laughs> funny. Our relationship is in tatters. That's not funny. That shouldn't be a text. Should not be a text. Should not be a text. And yeah, that's the last chapter. So I'm I'm wondering what it's going to be like now that she just like walks in. I was like, oh shit, I haven't seen you. Yay. And then the dad's just standing in the background going like, oh shit. Oh boy. She looks cute. Fuck. Uh, not okay with this. Yeah. That's, uh, that's called Musume no Tomodachi, which is daughter's friend. And the other one was uh, Sensei Skiate and Gyaru Gohan. Those are things I like to read. Those are things I'm keeping up with. The shit's going off. All right, man. I guess that's it for this episode, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for listening to Manga Palette. If you guys are still here, you guys get it. Yeah, you guys get it. Yeah, you guys get it. All right, bye.